session, we're going to literally talk about what's an always on event and show you also the, the platform that we launched as it's, it's a way to organize always on events. Um, and I think now the industry is screaming for solutions like this. So if you think about it, we, I'm now in London, I've just been to an event, Convex, it's an event uh, for event organizers. Um, we spend like, let's say three to 5,000 euros for exhibi exhibiting, because you also need to think about flights, you know, exhibition booths, uh, whatever. Um, we as a company, we had like 30 meetings booked, but um, before that we did two, two weeks of preparements, two weeks of like sending up meeting requests and trying to get as much as meetings as possible. When I asked my other exhibitors next to us, like how many meetings that scheduled, some of them said zero. Some of them said, oh, three or four. Uh, and they say, oh, we just wait for people to come by our stand. I think that period is over because your time is worth a lot and that money uh, that you spend, it will not bring you anything in return if you don't have a way to pre-schedule that. Um, so you're just dependent on the people that are passing by. That's that that's a lot of of, of time lost and uh, opportunity lost if if you look at it like this way. And what you see is that we think this really needs to change. Like events in general, they're they're becoming like unprofitable this way for sponsors, um, as they need to find a new way to get like. A return on investment and i think the return on investment has been going down um if if people don't get value all year long and what we see at events like this now we had 20 to 40 meetings that's nice but we think these kind of events these kind of trade shows they should be turned into always on events so an event that basically runs all year long so if you think about it as a trade show, as like Convex, for example, where I've been, uh, is that instead of like going home um, and you know following up on the meetings that you had, um, now I would be maybe having twenty meetings a month uh, with people at times that suits me best. It's way more convenient. Also, if you think about the number of meetings per year, than like two hundred or something. It's way more convenient than basically going to an event, flying there, being on for eight hours, very stressful, uh, having 40 meetings all packed in two days, spread over two persons. It's very like, it's it's very stressful, that's one. Also, uh, you only have a small bit of time to, to talk with everybody. And what do you do at these events? You basically schedule virtual meetings with those people. So in the end, you're ending up doing virtual video calls anyway. Um, I think in-person events, they're good. They're good to meet, for example, people that you haven't meet, met virtually and finally meet in person. And I think they should still be organized, but I think they should be spread out over the whole year and they should be more qualitative instead of let's put as many as, many as people uh, into one place and let's uh, meet as many as people in a short amount of time and then go home. I think it's way more valuable to have always on events. So what is an always on event? So in our vision, what is it? It's basically an event that never sleeps. It's an event um, that runs all year long, um, but it's basically the same as a one day event. You do exactly the same things, but you spread it throughout the whole year. And where I really wanna focus on is that we believe that events should stay event led. So we don't believe in content led always on events I think that's something totally different An always on event is literally an event that never ends so never ending meetings never ending um going to workshops never ending going listening to keynotes never ending going to a networking session uh, but repeating that throughout the whole year so my question is like does anybody have a clue or idea about what what is what always on events mean to to the industry or to the to the business do you have any idea for example, Stephanie or Jan or Renee, like, what do you what do you think? Do you understand what it means to, for example, an attendee? We think it's a 
a 1,000% increase in everything. 1,000% increase in the number of sessions you can attend, the number of uh, business you can do, uh, and the number of meetings you can have. And in an always-on event, what we think changes is the following. An attendee basically becomes a member of a community. A ticket becomes a subscription, which is very valuable to event organizers if you think about the assets that you create within a, for example, commercial organization. Um, and organizers become community managers, being in charge of a crowd and being in charge of creating momentum. Because I think event organizers are very good in creating that momentum. But normally for an event, they only do it once a year for a big trade show, for example. And then they go on to the next event. Well, I think they can use their skills as a community manager um, to basically create momentum throughout the whole year for a number of events. Um, this is what we think looks more like a Netflix and Spotify subscription model. Um, and what it means to the industry is huge. I think people don't realize. It's literally 1,000% increase in value for sponsors. Instead of having 20 meetings, they can have 200 meetings throughout the whole year. Instead of, you know, as an attendee, attending six knowledge sessions, um, people can attend 60 knowledge sessions throughout the whole year. It's like, um, what is it, five per month? Um, that's not even much uh, if you compare it to a general event. Uh, and instead of like selling 500 tickets every year and trying to like, get your ticket sale up and running, you focus on adding new subscribers to your event community, which as a company is way more profitable. And also the value of your community will increase year by year. So we think that this is what the, what the industry is now moving to. We see a lot of signals as well uh, from event organizers uh, that they're really, really hard working on this. Uh, and they're all struggling. They have no clue on um, basically how to make and go through this transformation. So this is literally what we're going to talk now about um, is to show you some examples of communities that we supported last year with our platform. Um, and also to introduce you to the Network Tables AO community platform. This is what we launched one year ago um for a number of customers uh but we already were working four years ago for one customer but didn't realize what we were doing uh but basically with the network tables ao event community platform um you have no app no registration forms for every event to attend but you have just one magic link that you can send to your audience which are your members um, and with that link they can access the platform and can sign up throughout events throughout the whole year. So, so imagine you're an association, you're an accelerator uh, with a fixed audience, fixed program for them to attend. Um, you have to do a lot of scheduling, a lot of inv invitations for every event, try to make sure people show up. So now you, you give them literally one place to see all of those events, to see who else is attending, and also to give them a place to find other members, to connect with other members, uh, and to return every time to this platform. Because you can either return there to watch a webinar uh, like this, or you can even host a session yourself about a certain topic and invite other people to the platform. Uh, and on top of that, what we think is really a big is that we can make it always on by turning people into chat groups. So for example, now we're talking about what's an always on event. After this, we could continue the whole conversation in a chat group and you can choose to be part of that chat group or not. Um, and in this way, basically we keep the conversation going. So I'm not going to pitch and tell you all the features. We can always have a conversation about that, uh, but it's basically one platform. Um, in general, where you can put all of your events and people can easily sign up for all of the e events with a couple of clicks. What I rather would like to focus on now 
is literally tell you the story of last year, what we've been experiencing with Voom and which customers work with us and literally share their use case. Um, is anybody already curious? Um, do they have some questions? Uh, then maybe please put it into the chat uh, so I can really take them into consideration. I think Stephanie is like saying something. So, okay. So I'm also curious, Stephanie, why you think it's interesting in general, but let's talk about that later. So what you can see here is the companies using the AO community platform. It all started with coaching.com. Uh, before it was called World Business Executing Coaching Summit, but they're, they're just acquired by coaching.com. I think it's directly interesting um, that this happened. Coaching.com acquired a community with yearly subscriptions. So that's a lot of value. If you think of estimating uh, the value of a company when acquiring a company, uh, you're not buying just a concept uh, and an event concept where you expect a number of tickets to be sold. No, you have a community with subscriptions, yearly subscriptions. So the value of that is way higher in terms of multiple um, than to just buy event company that organizes an event once a year. Um, Port Excel is an accelerator. I think is like a network organization uh, where people, you know, also an association. Atlantic Smart Ports Acceleration Network is an accelerator. Um, Discover Connect Perform um, Next Live by Event Branch is again an association. So you see, typically, besides coaching.com, which is a summit, uh, you see a trend that associations and accelerators they're using and they're like really demanding a platform like this where they can put all of their events because of the nature of their organization. They're all member driven. They're all event led as people that are part of the community attend their events to get together uh, and meet others and share innovations, for example. So let me talk about the concepts that they have organized within their communities. And let's let look at every community as a separate, a separate uh, community and to see what they do. So let's start with WebEx. This is coaching.com. So what they do is they started four years ago using a platform. Um, and they said, you know, we're looking for an easy way to get our members signed up for a number of group discussions that would happen on Zoom. And we're like, oh, that's online and we don't know how it works because that, that was all pre-COVID. So we're like, okay, never mind. One year later, we started to understand that, that, that virtual events are highly valued and that uh, meeting up online is very efficient as they did 1000 mini events throughout the whole year uh, by a community of like at that time 20,000 uh, members and they used our product to give them a good overview of what's going on at what date throughout the whole year and to be able to click on the session um, and to literally see who else is on the session uh, so they can see if there's enough people or not and also to get reminders for every session they would go to um let me share my screen quickly um so you can see here this is currently their platform now they have 40,000 members so they grew from 20,000 to 40,000 members um and as you can see here um you can literally see what's going on today is a there's a session at 4 p.m my time um and you can see who else is attending uh, but you can also see what other sessions are going on, you see? And for them, this is just a scheduling tool uh, and a way for them to sign up for mini events. So some people have like maybe 50 events in their calendar. Um, so they're very highly engaged. And for them, the biggest value of, of a platform is that um, it is all automated. So they just add all of the sessions throughout the whole year. And they know that people are signing up throughout the whole year. They're engaging, they're coming back to the platform. Whenever the uh, event starts, they get a reminder like this um, and they drive engagement. So for them, this is the biggest added value is literally an, 
uh, reminder email that goes out with a with a link to to a Zoom session. That's all. Um, so let me go back to. I think I'm not sure. I was not sharing my screen, right? Or was I? Was, did you see my screen before? And did you see this? I don't think so. Let me know if not. Oh, good. See, okay, great. Thanks. So let me go back. So this is this is way back. So you saw my screen with all of the. Um, I should, okay, good. I showed you the reminder, right? The email reminder. Did you see that? Oh, I should share it again. Let me know. Okay. I think you saw it. Ah, perfect, perfect. Thanks, thanks, thanks. So, any anybody has questions about this summit? So it's a yearly summit, summit with like thousands of mini sessions with forty thousand members that grew year over year. Anybody has questions about this? No. Okay. Then we go to the next. Oh. oh interesting. So maybe even Stephanie, we can. I are you, are you happy to like tell something about it because it's interesting to hear some some feedback from you as well. I'll invite you to to join the conversation with me. Hi. Right. Hi. So, I mean, I'm just curious. You are attending WebEx yourself. I haven't attended recently, but I used to attend about five or six years ago. And one of the things that was difficult about it was, you know, they would send out the list of all of the um, all of the events and then having to go through and figure out what are you going to attend and you're signing up for individual events. So I was just saying this sounds a lot easier. I love the idea of just having kind of one magic link and being able to attend. You Can know, you tell, like, um, how, how did it work before for them? It's quite interesting for me as well. Like because so long ago yeah they they would send emails uh with you know with the big list of all of the speakers and there were so many speakers each day yeah. and you had to select each one and you would get you know you'd have to sign up for each one individually and register for each one individually so being able to you know easily go and see them and um you know just have one registration link i just think is 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 great so i haven't i haven't experienced it since they've been working with network tables but it seems like um it would be a lot easier cool do you understand how this work could work for like the future like in general for communities like events like community community led of event led communities like why it's so important to have such such easy overview that that some of them maybe don't even realize why it's needed yeah, I mean, we run, uh, we have an annual conference, but we have the community that exists all year long. And so, you know, that's why I'm interested in this always on event concept, because we we have the big annual event, but then we have several smaller events about once a month or so, but we could yeah. definitely increase that. And we would increase that if there was the ability to have a more community led events. So it's not just us putting on the events as the organizer, yeah. but but part members of the community could also put on events. That's that's appealing to me as well. And is that is that something you're currently struggling with? Like, you know, how how do we get people engaged? Or like would people do that? You know, like I think some people would. I mean, the the only issue we would have is moderating and just making sure that, you know, if everybody can hold an event, you know, are people holding purposeful events? Are they holding events that fit within our community guidelines? Those kinds of things we would have to work out. But, uh, you know, our community is very engaged. Uh, but right now they just have to to wait for us to put on an event. Uh, yeah. or and it's they... too much work for you as well to like send out the invites all the time, right? Yes. And we used to have only a one year in person event. Uh, and now we still do an in person event, but we also have a virtual event. And so keeping the virtual community just as engaged as the in person community is something that we struggle with, which is why I'm looking for more ideas. Cool. Thanks for sharing your um, yeah, experience. Sure. Thanks. So let me get back to the next slide. I think that's very good that she like this is exactly, I think, where the value comes 
uh, and where the industry uh, needs a platform um, to basically make sure that people have a easier experience within the community and enable your community members to do stuff. Um, and I think, yeah, this is a thing that WebEx like like experienced and solved five years ago. And I think it's a it's what other people experience now because the like the event industry is, is heading towards it. So um, let me go next. I think association for ports. They're association. They're like very innovative and they're very fast moving uh, in terms of change. So when COVID hit, they started to directly go uh, into online events. It didn't wait. Um, and they're like an association. People meet up. Uh, people share uh, IDs. People pitch new products. Um, and they do it in person and online. And what they have is like they have different concepts. So they have like keynotes and workshops that one on one meetings, uh, they have round like round table discussions, breakouts. And what they did last year is they, they run all of this on our platform and all of it virtually. Then when in person events came again, um, they were also adding their in person events there. And it basically shows it's been used as a scheduling tool. Uh, and as a tool to return and go uh, to see what's going on at events. Um, I'll discuss the feedback that they got because it's very interesting and result will also define what we're um, up to next after after um, uh, this experience and what we're doing in 2022. Um, then you have Port Excel. It's funny because it's, it's literally the same industry they're in, they're both in ports, but they're on a accelerator so they're not an association but they're an accelerator and the funny thing about an accelerator is like a defined set of program a defined set of events with a set of like a, with a per certain time period and the audience is the same for example so all the startups that join the program um so again what they used it for the port excel program uh it's the first use it for their one day event it's a conference with a lot of different sessions um, and then they said, you know what? Um, it's been so easy to schedule all these sessions for the one day event. Can we also use that for our acceleration program? Because we need to, to invite people to, to mentor meetings, like one on ones, uh, to workshops, uh, live and in person. So it's a mix. It's a huge like overview of mini sessions that uh, otherwise would cost us a lot of work. Uh, if we have to invite all those people uh, for every event and put them into groups uh, manually. So um, let me maybe share my screen and show you how that looks. Uh, so you can still see an October and November program. Um, you see they have live sessions here, Merit Team Service Community Pitch Training Live, October Digital Sessions, um, November program, you have the... Um, as a progress meeting so you can like have a progress meeting with your mentor at a certain date and a certain time so it's really one place uh, to find all also if you look at the attendee list um you can literally filter and browse all of the attendees by type and you can define all of these data yourself for example i want to see all startups now i can see all startups um you can add as many fields as you like for example in this overview here Go to the attendee list. They defined way more data fields, industry, technology, port type. Um, so it's really also a way uh, to find other members in the community and start connecting with them. Let me go back to the presentation. So that was Port Excel. Um, again, it's event led. Uh, very good question. Can you restrict events to certain people? So then we go to the next portal, Ac Atlantic Smart Ports Accelerator. So I just started using it and I just showed uh, my screen. I showed this uh, portal. Uh, they're an acceleration uh, program. Plus they also have um, attendees that are not part of the accelerator program, but they allow them to see the workshops. So you can restrict the tabs 
that I showed you for certain people. So all the startups have a certain tech and they can attend all of the mentor sessions. While if you're not in the acceleration program, you can still attend the workshops. So as a startup, they, as, a, as an event organizer, as an event community host, they prof keep providing value um, to the or startups that are not selected to be part of this startup program. So um, they, again, they use it, but they also use it as a way for their mentors to create uh, availability and create sessions throughout the whole year. Uh, instead of asking all of the members themselves and setting all of the meetings up for them. Then we go to next life. It's um, the, the community um, portal that's organized by eventbranche.nl uh, and they're going to launch it or they just launched it, I think today, or they're going to launch it this week or next week. Uh, and they're an association. They're a typical association for the event industry. And they used to send out uh, invites for every event they organize. Like they have a barbecue, they have the next event, the Gaudi Giraffe. And it involves a lot of effort to get the people to show up for the same, same sort of events all the time. Because I, as a member myself, I would also easily forget what's going on and when it's going on. I would my, I miss an email. But now, uh, what they've done, if they put everything in one overview, so as a member of event branch, I uh, can soon literally sign up with one click for their uh, events, for the, the meetups. But I also, very importantly, can create my own mini events myself that can be attended by other members. So they've crowdsourced events. And this way they allow their um, community to basically um discuss anything they want with other members um instead of them being in charge of creating those momentums um but what they did is they decided on the date they decided on the concept they decided on the even on the time so let me share <clears throat> how that currently looks very simple so what you can see here is you can see all year long nl netherlands what what i don't see is they have a lot of other tabs here germany for example but i'm I'm not a German member, so I cannot see those steps, but they try to keep everything organized in one platform. Um, because maybe the online events all year long and now, these are all online events they have currently put in, can all, they can also be attended by the German audience. So there you can see that even if you have an international community, you can start to create crossover uh, for your online events. Uh, while for your in-person events, of course, you only want to show it to people in the Netherlands. Uh, you don't want the German attendees uh, to show up for a, a small meetup with 50 people and travel to the Netherlands. Um, so you can see here, live events, uh, free for members, uh, the next event, uh, it's like you have to pay for it. So you get an invoice after you joined. But again, everything is in one place. And then you can see here, sessions organized by members. And they set all of these dates. And uh, with a click on the button, host a session. I can submit a topic, a description, and I can choose what days I would like to host, for example, mini session, whether it's online and offline. Um, and with literally one click, I can submit the session and other people can attend that. So, again, this is an association. Um, so, Let's see what we learned last year. Or is there any questions? Do you have a Dutch part in Dutch, a German one in German? Yeah. What do you mean like with that, John, Jan? I think what you mean is like, is it in this language? You mean the language or you mean, yeah. Yeah, so the tool in general is, is interesting. Like the, our tool is multi-language. So it's in German, it's in Italy, Italian, it's in Spanish, it's in Dutch, it's in English, um, it's in French, it's different languages. So it's it's convenient for uh, attendees to read stuff in their own yeah multi-language uh, tool. Uh, and also what's very important if you have international audiences is that it automatically translates to your current time zone. So I can see that a session is at 4 p.m., but it might be uh, at at 3 p.m. in the UK, for example. 
Um, okay, let me go back. So we had an evaluation with all of these <clears throat> organizations uh, and checked, okay, what, what, what did you experience in 2021? So how did it work? Uh, and biggest feedback was the following. Uh, so we're just trying to be open and transparent here. The biggest value they see um, for communities is automation. So for them, literally, an auto reminder going out and being able to, to change the emails of those auto reminders and to be able to <clears throat> let other people create sessions is the biggest value because it saves them a lot of time. So we should keep that and even go further on that. Um, the biggest question that we got is like, okay, it's nice, but you know what will be even greater is what if we could make the events continue after the event and how to do that? So after a webinar like this, how can we um, you know, keep being in touch? Also, they're asking themselves the question, okay, would members host topic-based events themselves? Um, because if they would, that would be um, a big value because then we don't have to organize events anymore for them. So they are looking into ways, okay, how can we make that easier? Uh, also, it would be great for them to auto-record our sessions uh, and to have an easier way to dis display them on demand. So you can imagine if you record a session like this, uh, I get the export, I can put it on YouTube, then I can put it in the platform. It's a lot of manual work. So uh, we took this feedback, um, but the biggest thing we realized is that there is a huge demand in the next three years for uh, event organizers making a shift um, to always on events. And there is a big demand, we think, for experience in this market um, and for uh, platforms that would allow them to automate all of their communication, uh, to hold all their events instead of them connecting everything together. Um, and that's why we as a company ourselves decided to uh, basically shift focus um, and provide an AO event community platform uh, to enable always on events. And we will also focus on creating features or doing anything uh, that would keep people uh, always on uh, and to keep audiences engaged. But it's not really content led because we think content um, makes people lazy um, and we want to create an active community with active members where people really go out there to engage with each other. Um, so we think it's really event led or meeting led. If you think about one-on-one -on -one meetings, uh, you can have one-on-one -on -one meetings every week, one hour instead of eight hours uh, on one day uh, on one event. Um, so what did we do um, and what we're going to do and what's coming? So as you see, we have a platform that allows uh, running communities from 150 attendees only to 40,000 members. So it can scale easily. Uh, and we already have the experience for four years. And we can also teach you about any business models involved with that uh, or freemium models or what you should do and not do or, or which tools to use. Um, we can do virtual events and in-person events. Like as you can see, everything is embedded. Every tool uh, that you want to use, uh, you can use, uh, but there's also inbuilt tools. So we try to make it as easy as possible for you and your members to just you know, throw events. Um, but what we're going to do is this. We're really going to focus on three uh, things uh, that would enable always on events. I think that's very interesting. So what's coming? First of all, chat groups. So chat rooms. So we're developing uh, and we're almost finished with that um, uh, algorithm to basically suggest chat rooms based on titles and descriptions of mini events or workshops or keynotes or meetings like this. So literally today, um, we could have asked you after this session, not during, um, okay, you've attended an event about Always On events. Um, would you like to be part of the Always On chat room or would you like to be part of the um, uh, 
community features chat room or pre post show content chat room or uh, would you like to be uh, part of the network tables AO platform chat room? So it's really focused on getting people locked in into chat rooms where they can continue the conversation. That's one. Then um, we focus more on crowdsourcing, crowdsourcing using your community members to really host community led sessions and involve others. Um, I think that's what uh, current organizations are doing, but they're scared uh, because they don't know if it will work or not will work. Um, they're scared to, to throw it and will help you like how to do it and what works and what not works. Um, and you will make it way easier um, to enable sessions being available on demand. So with literally one click after a session uh, ended, I can say, okay, move this session to on demand and automatically the recording will be available and automatically um, uh, people can start watching it. And even you as an attendee can literally see in your schedule that you've attended this session and you can just click on uh, watch recording. So if you not can fully watch the session, you can always watch it later. So it becomes like a, like a self-serve um, on demand uh, platform with a lot of content. But again, uh, we believe ourselves that people are lazy and people don't go back in there to watch the recordings, but it's nice if you miss a part of that recording. Plus, if you start to watch the recording, then we re-engage them, uh, suggesting certain chat groups to them about the topic, which makes them again active. So they can be active during watching a recording. Uh, instead of uh, sitting back, they can basically literally, you know, attend the conversation, attend the chat room. So this is coming. Uh, and I think this also defines like the always on event future for us. And we're really committed, um, allowing people to uh, host communities in this way where people are always on. So we have two more minutes uh, and that's what we'd like to see if someone has questions. Um, if there are any questions, please let me know in the chat and involve you in the call. And we Rene or Stephanie, like, is it all clear? Jan? Cool. Thanks for attending, Jan, and for your, um, Feedback. Is there anything like not clear to you? Um, like I can I can imagine, for example, it's like you can ask yourself why, like how to how you make it always on, or like how is it different than than other community platforms that that are um, out there uh, created, for example, for internal corporates to to chat with each other. Uh, I would like to thank you for attending. <clears throat> 